All right. Hi, everyone. Such an honor to be here. Thank you, Eliska. That was beautiful. I am going to bring you some fire in our uh, final hour here. We may not even go for the full hour, but there is so much that you've learned with Colleen um, and through all the storytellers around the importance of speaking your truth, the importance of having your story out there because of the permission that it gives others and the impact that it has. Not only as Colleen mentioned, have I had the honor of being on stage and earning a million dollars in speaking fees, I've also been able to impact millions of people. It's led me to create curriculum for universities. It's led me to be on TV and radio programs. Uh, you know, like I could watch with my grandma and be like, look, I'm on TV. Um, and from that platform, really create a ripple effect that was so much farther and wider than me. And as you've heard so many amazing stories and as you've probably worked on your own story, I now want to take it into, well, now that you have all those pieces, why don't you go and speak on it, all right? So it's all about how to share your wisdom with the world and get paid for it. So let's dive in. First and foremost, wisdom. When I say wisdom, there's so many things that that means to people. And oftentimes, people tend to feel a separation from those who are on stage of what, what would I be able to say up there? And so, you know, you can just type into the chat or, or raise your hand or drop a one, all right? One big thing I forgot to, I, I forgot to mention, I'm make, making a special deal with you all, and that is this. If you promise to give me some amazing energy throughout this presentation, I promise I will give you some amazing content, all right? So if that sounds good, give me a deal, a woohoo, a let's go. I want to see some of this um, chat blow up. There we go. Thank you, Ari, Jessica. Yeah, bring me some fire in the chat here for it all. Thank you. Vicky, yes, dear. Crystal. Ow, ow. All right. So this is not going to be one of those where you lay down and you receive. <laughs> this is one where we're going to be going back and forth and making it happen. All right. So how many of you want to learn how you can make a million dollars speaking from stage? All right. Give me some fire. Give me some emojis and let's dive into it. So with wisdom, what you'll find is that there's kind of three different layers of wisdom, right? One is if you have expertise in a specific area. There we go. All right. Now we're seeing some, uh, some energy coming in. All right. So first is having some experience um, that maybe is, is like a lot of the stories that you've heard today, unique experience that people can go and learn from, like a near-death experience or something like that. The second one is where you have expertise and something that you've created and studied for a long while and then therefore want to go and, you know, this is like people like Dr. Joe Dispenza who've gone deep into a very specific niche of work and are experts in that area. All right. And then the third one is actually passion. You'll see so many people who are simply out there sharing their passion for the world. And that passion becomes, you know, contagious and people see that on stage and go, Oh my gosh, I want to be, you know, passionate. I'm going to take up rock climbing or whatever else it might be. So my first question in the chat for all of you, are you ready? Get your fingers ready to chat. All right. The first question is how many of you are sharing your wisdom with others? Yeah. So if that, if you're doing it, give me a one or a yes. All right. Beautiful. Getting lots of yeses. Yes. One. It's messy. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. One. Beautiful. Now, how many of you are getting paid for that wisdom that you're sharing? All right. So now type in, are you getting paid for that? Yes or no? Through skills, yes, yes, beautiful, all right, all right. So this is the idea is that we're already sharing all of this wisdom, but what we're not doing necessarily is making the most money off of it. One of the cool things about speaking from stage is like pretty much at a minimum, you're making a couple thousand dollars per talk that you do, and it just goes up from there. So you can 5,000, 10,000. I mean, I've been paid five figures to fly into Singapore for one hour of my time and then come back. Right. Um, and so you really hit this new echelon of being able to bring in abundance while doing the stuff that you're already passionate about, that you're already doing. Now, a lot of people do this through coaching and speaking actually then feeds into that coaching or consulting type of work that you can do. So if I was to ask you right now, if this year, between now and the end of the year, you wanted to make another 10, 20, 40, 50 K, what would you do? All right. Type in some ideas. What would you go do? Maybe you'd launch a new product. Some people would say, I, I go drive for Uber or, you know, what are some things that you would go do? And has speaking been something that you think about as, oh my gosh, 
I can just go do what I love doing, go on stages, inspire people, and make that kind of money. All right, publish and market a book, reinvest in, in creativity to create more. Yes, all right. So I love the, uh, so I'm getting a feel of the crowd and who's here just from, from the chat. And I love the energy that's already coming in. So let me first and foremost introduce you to one of the most, oh, there we go. All right. So the idea is this is an audience that I got to speak to in Cambridge, Massachusetts, around 250 people. And the whole point of my talk today is getting you to imagine yourself there. All right. It's beautiful to go on the podcast. It's beautiful to do those, you know, virtual talks. But when you're in front of an audience and they're looking at you and what you're saying is just being absorbed by so many people, there is a palpable impact that is made. And that is really what I have been able to live for about the 10 past years of my life. And it has been one of the most incredible things to receive that applause, to give that inspiration and then also get paid for it. So I want to introduce you to one of the most prolific speakers on the planet. Who, who recognizes this person? Anyone know? Type in the chat if you know who this is. One of the most prolific speakers. No, it's not Deepak Chopra. Yeah, <laughs> my wife is here. She's saying I do. Yeah, so this is me, all right? So this is me as a kid. You know, glasses, nerdy, super introverted. If if anyone was to tell me at that time that I would spend a decade of my life being a speaker, going to Harvard Business School, all around the world, inspiring people, people would be like, yeah, right, all right? So this is never something I had planned. It all kind of opened up for me. I've always done theater. I've always loved communication. I always loved the audience. I always loved getting attention, right? And what ended up happening is that the first thing that I did when I, um, you know, went through university, got a job, went to graduate school, coming out of graduate school, I wrote a book. And I wrote a book about building personal relationships in professional settings. And what that meant is, in, in the summary, how to network. All right. And so I have my rock star pin here and it's all about how to network like a rock star. So I wrote this book to help people do what I did, which has become one of the top 5% of earners in the United States, 25 and up when I was just 24. I got one of those buku, super high impact positions at an amazing management consulting firm. And people kept asking me, how did you do that? And I wanted to help them. So I wrote a manual on how I went and networked. Well, I wrote the book, I published it on Amazon, I did the full gear, but I was on path to becoming partner. I really wasn't going anywhere else. And so I wrote the book just to help people. And when I'm a consultant, you know, I'm flying two or three flights a week, which I love because I love starting conversation with the person next to me. They don't always like it, but I do. And in this particular conversation, that person happened to be open to chatting more about himself. And what he told me, that he was an MBA student at the University of Pittsburgh um, and was about to join a management consulting firm. And so he turns to me, he goes, Jamin, you know, tell me more about you. Now, usually I would just tell people, hey, I'm a consultant, la da 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 but something clicked in me in that moment and it was like, say you're an author. And I've never done that before, folks. So I turned to this man for the first time ever in my life. I was like, oh, well, I'm an author. He's like, oh, dude, you have a book. That's so cool. What's the name of your book? I said, well, my book is called The MBA Guide to Networking Like a Rockstar. He goes, dude, I'm an MBA. I go, dude, I know. This is why I'm telling you. And so by the time the plane landed, the pieces came together. And he said, Jamin, I really believe that my school would love to meet you and see your book and, and just connect with you. Can I make that connection? Yes, please. So I go in uh, like about a week later, I meet with this entire team of, of career staff at the school and they say, Jamin, we read your book. We loved it. And we want to get a copy of it for every incoming MBA student. And I say, I was like, wow, you know, like this is like my baby, my first baby. So I'm so grateful. So, so just, you know, thankful for this opportunity. And they say, Jamin, when we give away your book, we'd love to have you come in and speak to the students about it so that they actually open it and read it. Like, you know, I said, sure, I can put something together, no worries. They go, wonderful, does this date work for you? I said, yep. They go, great, how much do you charge? To speak? I had no idea that you can get paid to be a speaker. I didn't even know that this was a career that I could have. And not only did that become my first ever paid speaking gig, it then led me on to connecting with their entire network of career fairs and conferences where they would go to find folks like me and led me to a very illustrious, almost decade-long career, and I'm still doing it. Even from Bali, Indonesia, just on Sunday, I logged on to Zoom for an hour, made a couple thousand bucks, and spoke to 90 students at the University of Texas and, and delivered my keynote talk. 
it was just powerful. And every year that school reaches out to me and says, Hey, how's this date work for you? I don't have to do any more of the marketing or the promo. And they usually book me for three to five talks every single year. So just that one school on its own becomes a five figure revenue stream for me as I'm doing it. And so this is just a little bit of of where speaking can take you. Now, I was very proud that in my first year of speaking, I went out, I hustled my butt off, and I made $40,000 in speaking fees, not knowing anything about entrepreneurship or speaking or anything. Then later that year, I went to, I started learning marketing and going to different, you know, trainings and things like that, where I met a man who soon would become my first coach. Even though I'd only earned $40,000, I invested $10,000 into working with him, and it just felt right. And I worked with him and in that first year, he helped me triple my business into a six figure business. I invested 20 more thousand dollars into him to work with him for two more years. And it just blew my speaking career out of the water. And a lot of those things that I've learned is what I want to share with you today. So this is just a little snippet of the different places or stages that I've been on. You may recognize some of these names. So pause. If you were to find that besides TEDx, of course, TEDx, what would you say is the number one most influential stage to be speaking on besides TEDx? In fact, I'll make it easy and take away Harvard. So besides TEDx and Harvard, which of those is the most influential stage to be speaking on? Type it into the chat if you know. Fabex. And Fabex is not on there, but yeah, Fabex, <laughs> Fabex would be one. I hear people shouting Fabex. Any guesses? So this is something a lot of people won't tell you. It's ASAE. Okay. ASAE is the place that you want to be if you want to be a speaker. That's where you get exposure to all the meeting planners of all the conferences that are happening all around the world, especially around the US. And that is where they're gathering to meet and connect with other different people. The number of talks that I've gotten by being at, on that stage, is, is what has really influenced my career to get some of these other ones as well. All right. So these are the type of things that you really can't Google and find out, but it's something that I've learned from my experience. So through speaking, not only have I been a able to go to like extremely beautiful historic hotels that like presidents speak at, but I've been able to go to places like the University of Michigan Ross School of Business with like this beautiful multi-layer audience. I've been at some of the most amazing conference venues here in Oregon, speaking in front of just hundreds of people, getting all my books signed, doing a book launch. This is in London where I did my book launch for my eighth book and had a book signing. And then also along the way, got to meet some pretty cool people. Like I actually met Deepak Chopra. I met Joe Theismann, put on his Super Bowl ring, Rudy Giuliani, um, and this guy, Niall DeMarco. America's next top model. I put that one because he's the prettiest out of all the ones that I met. So this is really cool. The things that being on stage actually open up to you and you get into this world that is just really powerful. And more importantly, what it did for me is that all of the stuff that I experienced opened up for me and my family, something that we call the life of Anne. You see all of this, the, this, the six figures that I would make every single year on my speaking tour, you know, hitting these 20, 30, 40, 50 K months, I would do in four months. Right. So four months a year, I would be speaking and eight months a year, we'd be traveling, going on adventures. And that's also why I've written eight books. So I had all this time open where most of my talks would happen in one part of the year. So I had a very predictable life schedule where in four months, I'd make all the money I needed to make. And the rest of the year, I'd get to go spend it and enjoy time with my family, be present as a father and have so much more freedom in my life. So this is to me the best job in the world. All right. So if I can get a stool that's a little bit higher, is, it, is that possible to suppress this? Um, so no other job that I know you pays you thousands per hour for your time. If you're a really, really super high end coach, you kind of break a thousand and, and up per hour. But in speaking, you're literally starting off in a couple thousand dollars. So like two to three thousand dollars is kind of the minimum. It also enables you to work where and how often you want. It make, helps you make a direct impact on people. All right. So you might be making these videos. You might, you know, put content out, but you may be limited in who you're actually impacting. But the stories people tell from seeing you really goes really far. Perfect. Thank you guys. My support team here. I don't know. I might turn, maybe turn it. All right. Perfect. Okay. Great. And for me, can I get the screen a little bit bigger on the slides versus me? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So 
Next, note the job, uh, uh, you know, when you complete it, is followed by tremendous gratitude, applause, and praise, all right? I've had so many different jobs that I've done, and usually when I do it, they're just like, great, you didn't F it up, right? And But when you're a speaker and you come off stage, people are just like, you're a rock star. You're like signing books, you're doing autographs, you know, all this amazing stuff is happening, um, which is really, really cool. Next, you get invited to all these VIP parties, you meet amazing people, like I mentioned, the people that I got to meet, you hear their stories, you stay in unique hotels, you know, you kind of, there's this cycle that kind of creates where you're getting inspired by the people that you're now hanging around. And it helps you be more inspiring from the stage. So the more you do it, the less you work and the more you earn, right? So your value actually goes up. You may start at say a $2,500 speaker and you work your way up to 5K, 7K, 10K, and more, all right? So the more you do it, the less you actually have to work. And this is also what I find that every single celebrity, what do they do when they're done being in movies, when they're done being a president, when they're done being a CEO? What do all these powerful people do? They enter the world of speaking. Now that they've established themselves as an expert, then they get on stage. So to me, this is 100% the best job that I've ever had in the world. All right, so how many of you think this is awesome? Give me a one in the chat if you think this is awesome. Yeah, you with me so far? Yeah, we're getting a one, a woo, one, one, one. Yeah, love the extra woo, beautiful. So let's dive a little bit more into some of the models of what makes this work, all right? So the traditional model we've all been taught, which many of you are probably already free from, is a nine to five, right? So this means we're just trading our time for money, we're doing the 40 hours, working for someone else. And we've left that behind for entrepreneurship. But entrepreneurship sometimes means this 24 seven kind of hustle. This has been my experience of making a million dollars in speaking, okay? Because this business model has been absolutely incredible. So first and foremost, I don't need a staff. I did about five years in hire someone to do my billing and invoicing because it got a little bit too complex for me as I really exploded my business. But you don't actually need any kind of staff, all right? So that means no meetings or, or, or discussions. There's no office, um, there's no daily commute, there's, you know, you work when you want, um, you know, from wherever you want, so let me to travel and be wherever I wanted, you work the way that you want. And the best thing for me is that there's no better product to be an entrepreneur about than yourself. And so when you're on stage, your product is you, is what you're saying. And so that is, to me, you get to easily believe in your product versus working for something else. Now, in addition to that, there's also super low startup costs. You don't need a lot of things. You do need some things in place, some marketing materials, maybe a great video and website, things like that. You don't need investors to do it. You can course correct as you go. If you decide to change your theme or your title, I mean, I've had four different websites for one offering because I kept changing the angle of my positioning until I nailed it just right, but I was still making money along the way. There's a virtual cycle market, right? So what I mean by that is the more you are on stage presenting, the more you get booked. Right, So there's a virtual cycle to what happens to now. People just reach out to me because I'm the established person in my niche and book three or five talks and just say what dates work for you. That's literally the level of negotiation that happens right now. All right, And of course, that takes a few years. There's a huge market opportunity. People are speaking every single day. Um, there's great competitive dynamics. You know why? Because even if I meet someone who does the exact same thing as me, there's no way that both of us can be on every single stage that's available, right? So even if you meet someone who's your competitor, you can actually become great friends with them and collaborate because there's really no risk of overlap. You're not actually competing because the market is so huge for speakers. And finally, this is a turn on, turn off model. So as I shared in my story, I would turn it on for part of the year and turn it off for the rest of the year. And that's what gave me this kind of ability to travel to 50 countries and, and do all of these things that I absolutely love and adore. So for me, speaking on stage, yes, it is inspiring people. Yes, it is doing that. But it, for me personally, it meant freedom, all right? It also meant impact and it meant abundance. It was my avenue to creating all three of these. So let me tell you how it works. How many of you wanna know exactly how it works to make it in speaking, yeah? Give me some love in the chat if you wanna see. Yeah, Anika, you're saying your product is you, believe in your product. It's so much easier when you have to believe in you. Nobody wants to see how it works? There we go, we're getting a yes from Colleen. I'm getting a one. Okay, Colleen, I'm just gonna tell you in secret, come up here. 
Anyone out there want to know how it works? There we go. Yes, please. Explain it. <laughs> yes, one. Okay, beautiful. So, two steps. You choose your platform and then you deliver and get paid. No, I wish it was that easy. I wish that people who came to me and said, well, I know what I want to say and I just want to connect to people and be on stage. And I wish it was that easy, folks, but it's not. There's a little bit more complexity. There's four steps. So first is you have to choose your platform. That means you really need to understand what it is that you are saying and to whom. Okay. So the number one advice I can give to anyone when they want to go out and be a speaker is I say to them, what are you saying to whom? And they go, oh, well, I want to say love yourself to everyone will not work. Okay. You have to say something to someone, not everything to everyone. The more you can focus on saying something to someone, the more you're going to really take off. All right. Next is that you need to position your platform. So this is what I think most people tend to forget. I'm going to talk about positioning a little bit more on the next slide, but this is what I have found the most critical step and the most place where, where people just hit a block and then don't move past it. Okay. This is the most critical step because once people are clear on your positioning, then they can actually book you. Then you got to market yourself. There's a variety of ways in which to market yourself, right? It's ultimately getting in the same room as these people, either virtually or in person, so they get to know you. And then you deliver and get paid. And as I mentioned, this is a virtuous cycle market, which means the more you market yourself, the more you deliver and get paid. The more you deliver and get paid, the more you're actually marketing yourself. I can't tell you how many times I've been on stage and I get off stage and three or four people come up to me and say, I want to book you for my next event. Right? So the more you do it, the more it actually becomes easier. Now, let's talk about positioning. All right. So this is the place where people get stuck all the time because they don't know how to take what they want to share and actually position it to something that can get them paid. This is why people, you know, end up signing up for like a speaker agency or do one or two free gigs occasionally here and there, and they're not actually getting paid. There's a difference in exchange when you're actually getting paid to be on stage. The way you show up, the way the crowd shows up, the expectation, the energy in the room just goes to the next level. And so this step is so critical. So one thing that you can ask yourself is what problem am I solving? And I'm going to give you an illustrative example of this. Let's just say that, you know, I'm a speaker and I go into a, uh, I'm speaking in the, the um, school market, right? The K through 12 market. I go into the room of a principal and they say, hi, I'm Jamin and I'm here to talk about connection. I want to teach your students how to connect with each other and build a culture where they can feel really connected. And the principal says, okay, sounds great. Leave me your information. I'll see if there's a spot open for you in the spring semester. Okay. Next day, another guy comes in, right? And he says, Hey, Mr. Principal, I'm here to talk about anti-bullying. Bullying is a huge issue and I have a beautiful, you know, hour long program that I want to present to your students to help tackle the issue of bullying in your school. And the principal says, amazing. Can you come in next week? Okay. Now, what is the anti-bullying guy going to talk about? Connection, communication, love, right? Like he's, he's going to talk about those things, but his positioning is anti-bullying. Does that make sense? And so when the principal hears anti-bullying, he's looking next week on his schedule to book that person right now. When the same talk is available, but it's called, you know, culture of connection, then he's like, yeah, okay, maybe we'll do it next semester. That is the difference. This is why it's so critical to focus on this is really asking what problem do you solve? All right. And so when you think about your positioning, this is your key to getting people to say, I'm intrigued. I want to learn more. I want to book you. All right. And so this is one thing to really spend a little bit more time on with what problem are you really solving? So you might be then wondering, okay, who do I market to? All right. So when you think about who you market to, I'm actually going to share with you something that like, you cannot Google this. Okay. This is the world of fee paid speaking. There are five markets broken down within the world of fee paid speaking that nobody really talks about. Okay. So there's different types of speaking within the youth market, the college market, then within corporate, there's corporate training and corporate keynotes. And there's also association keynotes. Okay. So most people, they want to come in and they want to do these association keynotes or maybe even some of these corporate keynotes. It's not unless you have a super unique story. All right. The people that I see doing corporate keynotes are people who are astronauts, right? Or they started billion dollar companies, you know? So if they're people who've, you know, 
gone to Burning Man and done ayahuasca, like that is not like the thing that's going to go on here, right? Um, if you have a near death experience, great. But so many people have had those. So it's really one of those things where you, you need to have a u- super unique positioning to make it into those. I personally chose the college market and the college market treated me very, very well. And then also I expanded that into the corporate training, which also then expanded me into corporate keynotes as well as then association keynotes. So I worked my way through this. I've done a couple of youth talks here and there, but it never was my focus. So this is not just the only information I want to share with you. I actually want to tell you who pays. Okay. So in each group, there's a different person who's actually going to pay for your talk. Now, I, I, I we're a little bit over on time today and I, I want to keep it short, but I have another version of this that actually says who decides because a person who pays is not always who decides. And the person you market to is you market to the person who decides, not necessarily to the person who pays. And then for each of these, there is an expected range of what is a reasonable amount of money to make, right? Um, and it really depends. So this is something that I, I can definitely sh- share later and teach more on. But I wanted to give you a snapshot to think about. I need to position myself, but then I need to also market to a very specific niche, which group within the speaking world am I really wanting to do? And one of the biggest things of feedback that I get when I share this is people say, wow, the world of speaking felt so overwhelming and now it makes sense. Now I can see where I fit in and this tends to be one of the number one things that propels people who are out there sitting, watching, wanting to do this to actually saying, now I see a way and now I see where I can go. So I hope that this supports you in getting clarity for where you might want to go with all of this. So anyone know what this number is? This number is the number of estimated talks that are happening every single day, every single day. You think about the number of schools, the number of universities, the number of companies, and the number of conferences that are happening. And it is wild just how many speaking opportunities are happening every single day. All right. Every single day. I'm sure that you probably find 50,000 talks just in New York City in one day where speakers are getting paid to speak. All right. So this is a very conservative number, but there are so many talks that are happening. So many people who are plugged into this. So many people that I've coached who have gone on to make over six figures in speaking fees because they tapped into this thing. So just know the market opportunity is huge when it comes to speaking. So a lot of people I meet are like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a speaker. And they kind of tend to follow this old formula, all right? So just for illustrative purposes, I want to show the difference of fee, of fee paid speaking. So first, let's just say the old formula is you, you want to speak and you get 40 people at an event. Maybe if you're really lucky, they're willing to pay $100 each to come see you speak, okay? You go out there and you make 40 sales, all right? So now you're making $4,000. So that's in revenue. That's not including the cost of the venue and your travel and all the other stuff. So maybe you're walking away with, say, you know, two or three thousand dollars at this point. And this is the old formula of how things used to work. All right. So you hustle, hustle, hustle just to make 40 sales. Now compare that with with a six figure formula. All right. This is what I use to make six figures every year. Healthy, healthy six figures. This is just one hundred thousand dollars. So you find people who will pay you, let's just say the very minimum. $2,500 $2,500 per talk. Like I said, this is kind of the starting bar, depending on which market you're in. This might be overpriced for certain markets, so it just really depends. But in general, you want to be at around $2,500. Now, then you go and make 40 sales. Okay, so instead of making 40 sales for $100 to come to your, your talk, you go make 40 sales, that is immediately $100,000 in your bank account. And 100,000 people close to that you're probably inspiring, right? And it's a flywheel that's now going to generate the next 50K after that, that's going to come in the following year, right? So just by stepping into it, you get into the momentum, into the machine of being that speaker that everybody wants to bring onto their stage, all right? So you're still putting the same effort of 40 sales, but you're making way more per sale and you're expanding your abundance. And the best thing is, you know, when I say I make a million dollars in speaking fees, I mean only speaking fees. This is not including when I was designing curriculum uh, for different universities, my consulting fees, the coaching that exploded for me afterwards, all of my book sales, over 10,000 books in, in circulation. All of that is even in addition to just the speaking fees themselves. All right. So 
Yep. Okay. We're just getting here over time. So I'm, I'm going to bring us home very quickly. All right. So, okay. Thank you. I'm getting amazing. So expansive, Jamin. Are you feeling this? Yeah. Give, give me some, uh, give me some love in the chat. If you're feeling what I'm saying, I really want to open up the door for free paid speaking to you all. So you really can understand what it can be for you, what it feels like. So you can connect more to it and just the ease and, 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 um, access to it. Beautiful. Please keep going. All right. Beautiful. So let's keep going. I love it. I love this energy. So first and foremost, wisdom. Many of you have already cultivated your wisdom, but I want to give you some examples that I gave earlier about what wisdom really looks like. So this is my friend Ginger. Okay. And she's uh, talked about her passion for travel. All right. So she had this thing called the traveler's mindset. Now she did this at TEDx Brookings. Okay. I had to Google to see where Brookings was. Okay. It's literally kind of in the middle of nowhere. All right. Now, even though she did her TEDx talk in the middle of nowhere on just something she was passionate about, which is having a traveler's mindset, will you notice here that she has hit 200,000 people through her TEDx talk? It's probably even closer to three now. This is actually an older image. Okay. So this is the really powerful thing is like when you're in your passion and you're on stage, people will connect to that passion. If you can tell, I'm really passionate about this being the best job in the world and just being like, why aren't all my friends doing this? All right. So this is the passion that becomes contagious. And she has 200,000 views on her TEDx talk about having a traveler's mindset. Okay. So next is experience. This is my friend Arjuna. All right. Arjuna was one of those members of a gang growing up, got shot, had a completely life changing experience. And now he's bringing yoga and inner peace to the streets. All right. So this is that inspiring story of, Oh my God, you literally got shot. And now you're going back into, you know, the ghetto and you're teaching meditation and spirituality and yoga. Like, wow. Right. So, so this is the type of experiential story that people want to, I mean, you hear him talk. It's goosebumps. It's straight up. It is goosebumps. All right. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Jane. So next we have expertise. All right. So expertise can really be a lot of things. Most people get stuck here. They get into self doubt. I don't know if I'm an expert. Check out some of these speakers who are literally making so much money. This guy is a juggling motivational speaker. Okay. So his expertise is juggling. He combined that with motivational speaking and he talked about what he learned from juggling that translates into real life while being entertaining AF. All right. So this is one level of how you can build expertise. Another one is, you know, obviously you don't even need to have your own expertise. You can go and interview and research and bring together a unique perspective, which is what one of the most famous authors in the world has done, Napoleon Hill, by interviewing a bunch of powerful, rich people. He wrote this book, Think and Grow Rich, and that has been his lasting impact and legacy. Uh, with millions and millions of these books sold all over the world. And even a movie was made out of it. So it doesn't have to be your own expertise. It can be your own unique perspective on expertise that's already existing. All right. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. So now the big question. Let's just receive a breath into everything I've shared so far. All right. So. Ah. <sighs> It's super important. I'm going a little fast here, you know, just to keep the energy and kind of keep us on time. I know you've been going for many, many hours. So I, I'm going a bit faster, but I just want to take a moment to let this settle into your system. Like what's available, um, you know, when you look at this world from a different lens and perspective. So is this for you? All right. So if you enjoy these things, then you're going to make it. These are the main things that I did with my life for years that led me to making all this money. All right. First and foremost, speaking on stage. Yeah. So you love speaking on stage. All right. You got to design a website about you and or your passion. So you got to, you know, communicate that in some way. You have to be sending emails, tons of emails and outreach go happens here. Going to events, meeting people. Okay. Talking on the phone. You're going to have conversations with people. You're going to travel to cool places. Sometimes not even cool places, but you'll, you know, like I've been to Missouri. Um, but I got put up in an amazing hotel that surprised the crap out of me. So I actually really love going to different places and then receiving a check. All right. And then just doing it all over again. These are literally the steps. The ways in which you do them is really impactful, but these are the main things that you need to do to make it as a speaker on stage. Okay. So right now, do you have a powerful story to tell? Yeah. Drop me a one in the chat with all of these. Okay. So we're going to do a little final run through here as we come into to the, the, the final r runway. All right. Do you have a powerful story to tell? Yeah. Drop a one in the chat if you're with me. 
Beautiful, okay. Two of you, only two powerful stories to share. Oh, there we go, we got a few more. Okay, good, I'm like, we're at a storytelling conference. Okay, do you find yourself driven to make an impact in the world, yeah? So drop some ones. You have so many powerful stories to share. I love that show, all right? So do you find yourself driven to make an impact in the world? Do you feel like there's some big mysterious gap between you and the stages that you want to speak on? Okay, this is what people tell, tell me very, very often. They're like, Jamin, I want to do it. I just don't know where to begin, okay? Do you wish you knew the exact steps for getting on stage and getting paid? Yeah, just keep dropping ones. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Okay, uh, do you feel frustrated that you're not on stages or on the world? You're like, you, you see someone on stage and you're like, I could totally do better than that person, right? I have that all the time and that's such motivation for me to go on stages and just do a better job. Low one, 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 one. I love it. <laughs> right? Do you know that you deserve to have your voice heard? Yeah, do you know that? Do you have that deep feeling that having your voice heard is going to make like a permission ripple effect happen? All right? Seeing the ones come in beautiful. All right? Do you have a deep feeling that your story will inspire big shifts in others? Right? Do you just know that like the more I say what I do or what has happened to me, the more people are responding to it and getting permission from that? Right? Can you actually hear and see people applauding you, thanking you, paying you for stepping out onto stage? Maybe this has already happened. Maybe you've gotten paid to go on stage. Maybe you received it and now you're like, I want more of that. Not only can I imagine it, I can, I've actually felt it and that's what I want more of. All right? Yes. Now we're seeing all these ones. Do you feel done waiting around or just kind of doing the occasional free gig here and there, right? So, and also, do you feel ready to actually learn how to do this as a speaking business, right? Most people who want to get on stage, they just want it to be this glorious thing where someone discovers them at a bar and then gives them a whirlwind around the world tour. It can work like that, okay? It's definitely worked like that a little bit for me. But ultimately, it's when they see that you've established yourself and you have a whole system of a business where you have different, you know, marketing materials and collateral and a, and a, and a website and all of these things that people can take you very seriously because they want to make sure that what they're investing in is really going to get it. All right. And by doing this, by viewing your ability to be on stage as a speaking business, it's actually going to lead you to not only impacting millions, but also making millions. All right. Does that feel good? We're getting some ones for that one. Beautiful. So if this is true, then, you know, I can definitely make you help you make this happen. Um, this is something that, you know, Colleen has been beautiful and amazing to invite me into the Favix event to talk about this sort of stuff. I used to do speaker trainings for a, a long time because everyone wanted to know, Jamin, how are you doing what you've done? Right. Um, and I've helped launch amazing speakers to really powerful places. I haven't been doing it lately because now I have like a booming coaching business. My speaker business is just riding smooth. Um, and so this is not necessarily something that is, I would say, like adjacent or coherent to what I'm offering in the world. Um, but Colleen's like, babe, can you make this happen? And I said, absolutely. So I am going to be with Colleen collaborating uh, to create a speaker, like, like how to speak from stage uh, course. All right. We're going to start it in September. We're going to go for a month, come back, do another week in October, and we're going to cover five main things. Okay. One is how to know what to say on stage. Right. So this is really important because you have the story that you've been working on. Colleen is such an amazing storytelling coach, right? I've spoken on her stage and I, I was just blown away by what I learned in my crash course to, to go on stage. So then we take that and we craft an entire talk that's actually going to get you paid to be on stage, right? So you need to combine two different levels of a talk of the education and the inspiration and put it together. All right. So then. We're going to really ask this question, can I really get paid for my talk? Okay. And so the idea here is that your positioning has to be right. If anything in your positioning is missing, then no, you will not get paid. People will not be attracted to you and you know, they're not going to be glad to pay you. They'll probably maybe do a free event or just skip over you. So your positioning really has to be nailed. This takes a couple of weeks to do back and forth, multiple iterations, but when you nail it, oh, you nail it and it begins to just, you know, be that flywheel for you. So we're going to spend a lot of time really making sure that you can get paid for your topic. And then pretty much what I'm going to do for you, and I have all these videos that I've recorded and content from, you know, the previous stages of my life. So you're actually going to get like pretty much a decade's worth of experience in the speaking world 
all put into a few weeks and you'll have access to that library for as long as you want. So I'll tell you, you know, where those people are who make decisions, right? I also have lists for different markets, depending on which markets you're interested in. Um, what stuff, you know, a lot of times when you talk to someone, they'll say, Oh my gosh, this sounds great. We'd love to have you speak. Send me your stuff. And it's like, oh, well, what should that stuff be? Like, what should I send, right? Um, and also there are unique things to say when you want to land gigs, right? So I'll, I'll give you a hint here. Like one of the most amazing things that is a difference between getting rebooked and referred as a speaker or not is that you show up and you check in with the organizer and you say, hey, how are you doing on time? Are you running behind? You need me to catch you up. Because guess what? Every single conference that you go to is running behind. So if you're there saying, well, I have 90 minutes and I have to say all of it. In fact, I'm going to go over by 10 minutes. It's going to stress everyone out. If you come in with 45 minutes with room for 75 and you say, hey, do you need me to catch you up today? And they go, oh my gosh, that'd be great. Everyone's already hungry and we're behind on lunch. Now they're like, oh my God, the speaker was amazing, right? So it's little things like that and you just... Like you can't Google, you can't know until you're there. This is the type of experience that I want to share with you so that you know all these hacks to get in with all of these planners. And that's when they rebook you and refer you over and over and over again. All right. So there's just little beautiful things that you can be doing. Really working on your money mindset. Many of you have been telling me that you're getting paid to speak on stage already. So that's amazing. Now let's crank that number up to the next level. So we'll work on money and I'll also tell you exactly how much to charge based on the market that you want to speak to. And then finally, just navigating and optimizing the whole journey. So, you know, we'll do marketing, we'll do negotiating, we'll do pricing, we'll do what I call empowered selling, which is like an everybody wins type of sales model. But it'll also talk about travel hacks, right? Like, how did I go to Taiwan and have my whole trip paid for by doing a talk there? So there's all these like fun things that you get to do with speaking that most people like don't really think about, but it allows you to travel the world as a business expense. So I can talk a little bit more about all that stuff. So these are the type of things that, you know, I want to bring in a hundred percent. I mean, I've done this. I've helped others do this. So a hundred percent, I can help you. And the, the real decision is, is this something that you desire, right? If you're looking at this picture, you're seeing 250 people in a room, arms in the air, excited about what you just said, applauding you, clapping, you know, clapping for you. And you can see yourself here at the podium. Then, you know, really there's only one question left. And that question is, why not you, right? Hundreds of thousands of talks are happening every single day. Why aren't you the one on stage? So if you want to learn more about this, just send me a message. It's going to be a small, intimate group. It's going to be about maybe six of us. One of the spots, one of my friends is already like, okay, I want it. So um, we have five of those six spots. If you want to reach out, if this is something that you seriously want to do, right? So again, this is not for you. If you're like, I want everyone to know that they can just love themselves. Not going to happen. Okay. If Brene Brown wanted to do that, people would pay her, right? If you want to say that, you're probably not going to get paid because you're not Brene Brown yet, right? So if you have something that you want to share with the world, if you know that this is serious, if you know, you know, people used to ask me, Jamin, when do you feel most alive? And I say, when I'm on stage, when I'm on stage, I feel most alive. So if that's the type of person you are, this is going to be exactly what you need to just feel more alive and share that with others and get that permission ripple going out. So. Thank you all so much for the super fast version of how to make a million dollars as a speaker. Sending you all so much love. Colleen, thank you for having me.